theology and methods. Theology has as its Greek roots in the words theos and logos. Theology, theos and logos, and logos rooted in Greek. Theology is a reason discourse about God. When it is simply our talk, purely human talk about God, it can be just philosophical, something we find in Aristotle's metaphysics. But originally, there is always God's talk about God as expressed in the prologue of John's Gospel. In arche in hoi logos, kai hoi logos in prostantion, kai theos in hoi logos. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. John chapter 1, verse 1. But also contains the real human speech about God, including true philosophical speech about God. As Thomas Aquinas will put, every truth by whomever it is spoken is from the Holy Spirit. Through this Holy Spirit, God not only speaks to us, but demands our answers and our responses just as his accomplishment or work of salvation history in us does. Our first answer, according to Mancini, is the prayer of the church in praise and thanksgiving, expressed in the Psalms, in the liturgy, baptism, and in the Holy Eucharist. This is followed by our repetition of God's words in evangelization, catechizing, preaching, and works of charity. Finally, our third response to God's word, variable domini, and work of salvation in us is what we call theology, which is words about God's words, spoken to us in Christ Jesus, mediated to us by the church, in holy scriptures and tradition and in our own magisterial determination of his contents in dogma. Shannon Legusin Hoy Anthropo in I, who do people say that I am? Christ's disciples are not sure who Jesus was. Finally, Peter, the foremost disciple, replies, Jesus, the way the anointed, Peter was attempting to bring his own faith in Jesus to expression in, and in language. Peter, in a way, was also making a theological statement. Ladies and gentlemen, granted that theology is a complex subject, partly because grace, salvation, revelation, with our experience of God, particularly our experience of God as a community of faith. Theology is an attempt to understand and interpret the faith experience of a community seeking religious studies. With its emphasis on faith, theology is slightly different from the fields of religious studies or the history of religions. The latest religious traditions of faith from the outside as a detached and objective observer, while the former theology seeks to give expression to one faith from within a particular faith or religious tradition, such as Judaism. Christianity, Islam, and so on. The task of theology, if I may mention briefly, in his celebrated work, Faith Seeking Understanding to the Wider Culture, it is a reflection on the praxis of Christian faith. Theology is faith. 
According to Edward Skellibex, familiar to many of us here, yeah, Christian faith causes underlying this understanding is the assumption that faith and inquiry are inseparable as a scientific and systematic reflection of the church upon its faith. Local explanation and explication of the divine revelation receives and grabs in faith. It uses different exegetical and hermeneutical methods, some of which I'm going to mention briefly. Different branches of theology. Permit me to mention them briefly. It includes biblical theology, historical theology, systematic dogma, moral theology, social ethics, past liturgical theology, spirituality, and even canon law. Let me briefly comment on each of these, starting from below. Canon law addresses the code of the church's laws. Liturgical theology is concerned with matters pertaining to the church's official worship. Spirituality is used to describe a particular vision of Christian life and the manner of living it. Pastoral or practical theology, as Karana explains, is concerned with serving and building up the Christian community through preaching, worship, counseling, religious education, and service. Along with other aligned disciplines, it is focused more on directly on Christian life and practice. Moral theology articulates the values which informs the Christian life and identifies the kind of conduct which is inappropriate to Christian life. Social ethics, even the art, seeks to actual teachings of the church in the areas of social justice, international relations, and demonstrate how they are related to one another. Historical theology studies the development of the church's faith and theological tradition in different periods of history, such as the early church, as reflected in Acts of the Apostles, the era of the church's fathers, which we call the patristic era, the medieval period, the reformation era, branches of theology, biblical theology, exegesis, man, a very scholar will agree with me, of biblical studies includes, this is important, exploring the many contexts of the Bible and culture, its languages and literary forms, the perspective of its authors, the arrangement of the writings, and the interpretation of an individual grows out of the actual experience of the people who have used the Bible as a source of authoritative guidance and nature. Its laws, its ethics, its narratives, poetry, wisdom, history, prophecies, and letters, students, exegetes, theological questions in a variety of in studying the Bible, people ask spiritual and theological questions. Hence, the theology within biblical studies. The development of biblical theology within the broader studies. The question is and explaining hermeneutics, teaching, explaining, and of course, translating a biblical text or any given literature. In essence, hermeneutics is an explanation. In literature, even outside biblical text, could be English, any literature, in literature, especially biblical text, hermeneutics refers to the task of explaining the meaning of a piece of writing in faith. 
In other words, faith hermeneutics. Not just any hermeneutics, faith hermeneutics. According to Benedict XVI, one must be conscious of the relationship between historical research and hermeneutics of faith, or the complementarity of exegesis and theology. Exegesis and theology. Faith hermeneutics has two fold. The power to hold fast to the entire testimony of his sources and of course the breadth of his vision. There is also a secular understanding of hermeneutics. These secular sins have been held by all these German secular scholars, including Slemesha, Dietze, Martin Heidegger, Gerhard Ebelin, Gadema, or Rico. These secular philosophers identify hermeneutics as something in the past that can have meaning today or become existentially significant in the modern world. That is to say, in this use, it refers to the fusion of horizons or the integration of the meaning of the text into the world of the reader. As secular as they may sound, these German philosophers, the Catholic Church, the Pontifical Biblical Commission, still believes that there is something still good in them. We must not just throw them away. We must listen to people of all walks of life and even to enlighten them. One last point I would like to make under hermeneutic is that as an African Nigerian biblical scholar and an man, it is important to ground the section of this lecture with our emphasis on the importance of contextual exegesis and hermeneutics. Or uh, what Professor Joseph Lupong, uh, unlike the Western intellectual interiness of exegesis and hermeneutics, some of which we have discussed approaches. Contextual hermeneutics open reminds the community of ordinary people and their sociocultural context, the subject of intelligence, especially the Bible, we must always take cognizance of our local people, the context that we are Africans. We are not Americans. We are not Britons. We are not Canadians. We are Nigerians. Whatever we teach and preach, we must bring the gospel to the level of the people. And the Catholic Church and various documents of the wouldn't want to call their names, they completely agree on this that whatever we do, we must know that we are all black. There's no Igbo here. We are Africans and we are teaching our own brothers and sisters. Biblical exegesis and systematic theology or biblical exegetes and systematic theologians should work together in a complementary fashion because both fields have unique strengths and emphasis. In other words, there is need for continuous dialogue and complementarity between biblical exegesis and systematic theology. And there are many other scholars, you have it there in the booklet, that have contributed to this debate. John Pierre Ruiz, Bernard Lonegan, Krista Sandal, and name them. They all agree that even beyond systematic theology, there is a relationship between biblical exegesis, moral theology, practical theology, and all the branches of theology listed out there. They must not see themselves as enemies. They must work as neighbors. In sum, Christian faith is expressed in many ways through different related branches of theology. It is expressed in and in worship, in music, in architecture, and in art.
and in sacred scripture and tradition. All these forms of related theological specialties are disciplines in our community and in our society. In other words, the unity and the complementarity of these disciplines, as illustrated below, must not be taken for granted. As partners, both disciplines work with scripture and both speak to the world and of the world. Having said this, permit me to mention some modern objection that theology and biblical studies would have faced even in our Nigerian universities, including us university. Regardless of the beauty of what we have just said about the unity and the complementarity of theological specialties and the relationship between country belief that theology is not marketable, theology is not economics, Theology for them is an arcane, ancient, mysterious, and otherworldly abstract discipline. We seek to speak of God in a language far removed from human experiences. Theology seems to be abstract and something that can get lost in the labyrinth of academic trivialities. Some of them say that professors of theology are not well paid in Nigeria including me. When theology is taught, it is full of words that are at once familiar and very difficult to define. Words that I mentioned earlier like faith, justification, redemption, grace, salvation, redemption. Even a Swiss theologian that many of us are familiar with called Karl Barth made fun of theology. The perception that theology is an abstract subject with little relevance to praxis is what led Karl Barth to humorously recast the prophecies of Amos. He made fun of theology using Amos chapter 5. Listen to what he said, making fun of theology. Karl Barth said, I hate, I despise your lectures and seminars your wonderful sermons, addresses, and Bible studies, when you display your hermeneutics, your dogmatic, ethical, and pastoral bits of wisdom before one another and before me in them, take away from me your fat books, your heavy dictionaries, your gigantic doctoral dissertation, your theological magazines, your monthlies and quarterlies. Karl Barth's humorous description of theology without practical ethics, that is the point. Theology must be supported with pastoral action. Theology without practical ethics wins admiration of another friend of mine, Miyori, who also notices that simple Christian holiness Simple Christian piety has always objected to speculative and useless theology that frivolously asks how many angels can dance on the head of a pin or presumptuously deals with the mystery of God as with a problem in algebra. Theology, you must, ask, you must not ask how many angels can take reggae dance on the edge of a pin. Hence, opening the window for the questionableness of theology. In other words, proponents of practical faith, practical theology, pastoral theology, have always charged theology and biblical studies with being a mere intellectual game that causes paralysis rather than leading to action, such as putting food on the table and providing jobs in this part of the world. This humorous criticism of Theology by Karl Barth serves as a constant reminder to all of us theologians, including myself, that we should always match what we preach with action. 
exegesis, hermeneutics, theology must be matched with action. By the way, let us not forget the rich and indispensable history of theology. Theology has always been a discipline in the university from the beginning of universities. When students and scholars, towards the end of the 12th century, began to organize themselves into collective bodies or universities in towns and cities such as Bologna, Paris, and Oxford. As these universities began to grow and to take the place of monastic and cathedral schools, they generally included several distinct groups of faculties of scholars in master's and doctoral program, especially theology, philosophy, medicine, and law. Theology and philosophy has always been the root of scholarship since the beginning of the universities. And this traces its root back to the time of Ignatius of Loyola. In fact, they call theology and biblical studies in universities as architectonic wisdom. Architectonic wisdom. Architectonic wisdom. Theology is not only in unity with one another, but with other disciplines. I know this may surprise so many of us who teaches mathematics, teach mathematics, anthropology, physics, chemistry, biology, or whatever you have or nursing in our university. For me, this is very, very important. That should be a take home. That there is a relationship between theology and biblical studies with whatever we do here in our universities. And the reason being that, in what you have in the booklet, whether you teach mathematics, anthropology, or sociology, we are all addressing the human problems. And theology, philosophy, English, anthropology are all addressing the human problems. And this is one of the common LCM, the common denominator that underlines all the disciplines here in our university. There's a relationship between theology and philosophy. You have it there in your book. In terms of the relationship between theology and philosophy, um, John Paul II came up with a book, or encyclical we are all familiar with, Fides e Ratio, on the relationship between faith and reason. And he describes it as the two wings on which the human spirit rises to contemplations of truth. There is a relationship between theology, philosophy, and anthropology. In other words, faith gives the student of philosophy of the I sin kai you know call haughtiness, ek kolias metros, egenetes and hutos. Kai I sin you know call haughtiness, you know kistesan, hupoton and tropon. Kai I sin you know call haughtiness, you know kistesan. Hey autos diaten basileian ton urat. Sociologically, culturally, anthropologically, were translated into a dialect, or say English. If you heard in English, British English, that we are familiar, there are eunuchs who have been so from birth, and there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by men. That will make more practical sense, cultural, anthropological, and psychological sense than the foreign Greek text that I just read in Greek, in Greek. And that text can be translated into Hausa, into Igbo, into Yoruba, into all our different ethnic group languages in Nigeria. And that is the essence that theology and philosophy must not ignore culture, anthropology, sociology, and different cultures that we come from. Similar experience could be gathered from different texts of this sermon. Finally, there is need. Theology is worth being offered in our Nigerian universities. I cannot emphasize or overemphasize the worthiness and necessity of offering theological studies in our universities. 
particular since we now recognize that all the academic disciplines, including biblical studies and theology, my area of great passion, through which we are able to make our various contributions our neighbors. We are all brothers and sisters. Christianity, as pointed out by Mancini, cited throughout these lectures that you have it there in a booklet, makes absolute claims about nature and the possibility of human happiness. All human art and sciences, as discussed, are concerned in one way or the other with the human happiness. Whether you teach mathematics here, chemistry, biology, theology, philosophy, they are all seeking human happiness and how we can live in peace with one another and with God. Theology, which is what offering in our university serves all other disciplines in their search for meaning, not only by helping them to investigate how their discoveries will affect individuals and society, but also by bringing perspective and an orientation not contained within their own methodologies. In turn, interact with these other disciplines and their discoveries enriches and complements theology, especially biblical studies, offering it a better understanding and making theological research more relevant in our society today. Because of its specific importance, especially of theology that promotes biblical studies. Conclusion. And I would like to actually recommend booklets. Throughout this lecture, I have explained to the best of my ability within the time frame given to me the meaning and the relationship between biblical studies and theology, exegesis and hermeneutics, and theological specialties. I have also attempted showing how these theological specialties complement, interact, and impact related disciplines in the areas of natural and human sciences, chemistry, biology, law, philosophy, mathematics, and physics. These disciplines relate complementary to each other as neighbors. We are all neighbors. We are not enemies. Theological interpretation must be complemented with exegesis and hermeneutics of faith, as well as enculturation hermeneutics that take care of African values without watering down the faith. Where exegesis is not theology, scripture cannot be the soul of theology. To save and to cut time that you have been so patiently waiting, my personal theological and exegetical contributions to knowledge and learning have also been summarily left in Appendix A of the booklet that you have in your hand. I am not going to read them out. But permit me to draw your attention to one of my most recent contributions listed in the last paragraph of your booklet in Appendix A. I have, as mentioned during the citation, won many things. One of them being the 2022 John Paul II Leaders Grant for Interreligious Dialogue, an initiative of the Russell Berry Foundation, Rome. This grant supported our just concluded project in organizing a Medellin National Conference in Veritas University, Abuja, on Interreligious Dialogue with the familiar title, Rethinking Interfaith, Ecumenical, Cultural, and Religious Dialogue in a Nigerian Pluralistic Context, which took place a few months ago on May 12. That conference, which fielded over 10 speakers, including Cardinal Onaikon and many of us here, from all religious spectrum and genders, 
including Judaism, Christianity, Islam, and African traditional religion, was another of my numerous contributions to knowledge and to encouraging learning and fostering peaceful coexistence in a turbulent Nigeria. We had over 400 participants, both on-site and online, from global continents. It aligns with the mind of the church, particularly the Vatican II, as expressed in the Word of God and Interreligious Dialogue of the 2010 Verbum Domini and Vatican II's document, Unitatis Reintegratio, on Nostra Etata, that the church considers an essential part of the proclamation of the word to consist in encounter, in dialogue, lay down your arms and your violence, and cooperation with all people of goodwill, particularly with the followers of different traditions of humanity. This is to take place within forms, with, without forms of syncretism and relativism. This project, that project, serves as a reminder to academicians, to all of us, that the fast pace of globalization makes it possible for people of different cultures and religions to be in closer contact. It provided opportunities to all of us to actively foster Christian reunion, as well as to collaborate with members of other religions and academic disciplines. It presented Veritas University students and staff in particular a unique and rare opportunity to demonstrate how religiosity can foster relationships of national, continental, and universal fraternity. It enables them, it enables us to reconsider the vital place of interreligious dialogue in the face of pluralism of staff, doesn't matter where you come from, pluralism of students, pluralism of the courses we teach, pluralism of the method we use and our methodologies in our academia, in various departments and faculties. It emphasizes that religions must be able to foster a mentality that sees God as the subject of theology, biblical exegesis, and hermeneutics, as the foundation and the bedrock of all scientific learning, natural and human sciences, which are good. God is the inexhaustible source of moral life and the bulwark of profound of universal brotherhood and sisterhood. Finally, that conference reminded us that in the Judeo-Christian tradition, one finds a moving witness of God's love for people of all cultures. In the covenant with Noah, he joins them in one great embrace, symbolized in the rainbow, in the cloud, as we read in Genesis 9. And God desires to gather everyone into one universal family, irrespective of academic areas or specialization. Theology, history, natural sciences, biblical theology, mathematics, we are all brothers and sisters. And this has led to my submission that of which scripture that theology remains the soul along with other studies, especially exegesis, that are truly theological and necessary and worth offering in Nigerian universities and institutions. And my prayer is that may the tribes of theological specialties, biblical exegesis and hermeneutics, and other academic including including natural and human sciences, continue to increase mutually and prosper collaboratively and complementarily in our great Veritas unit. I cannot thank you.
in us. <laughs> in this critical time of violence, our students are already at home, and the love, the passion, and you are still here. Um, there is this expression that it takes a village. It takes a whole village, not just a family, to raise a child, a baby. And when you look at our faces here, you could see from the cardinal, you could see from his excellency, the deputy governor of Akwaibom State, you could see the Catholic bishop of Bauchi, his excellency, you could see professors, you could see male, female, sisters, HODs, name them from all walks of life at this critical time, security agents and media. I'm very grateful and thankful to each and every one of you. Of course, God is always our creator. Without God, none of us would have been able to be here. I'm very thankful to God for all that he has done for me and for enabling this day to be what it is. I'm grateful to my bishops and my superiors. My local ordinary, Bishop Camillus Umo, would have been here. He's presiding at a funeral of the CEO or the secretary, the CWO chairperson of the Catholic Diocese of Ikarekwane. He bought the ticket and he would have been here. He had to plead, Michael, Michael, please. Or he calls me Ufok, please. I have to attend to the funeral of this um, woman. So I'm very grateful to Bishop Umo. And I'm also grateful to my daddy, Bishop Kamiluzo Tugudo, now in Port Accord. He's actually the one that sent me on further studies. He wanted me to do church history. I said, no, 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 my Lord. I like Bible. He said, okay, carry on. <laughs> and I went on to read the scriptures. So I'm very grateful to all my superiors and teachers. My brother, Gabriel, took a night bus. And you can imagine. And my nieces, I have more than 18 nieces. I'm the seed child, as cited here, of the six siblings. Many of them would have loved to be here, but it is not easy. But my brother Gabriel is here representing our family. I'm very grateful to my teachers and professors, cited by Peter, my professors at Heart of Mary's Nation, Utong Kong, of which his lordship, Bishop Hilary Dachelem, also attended. My professors at the Claration Institute of Philosophy, Uweri. I migrated from Ikorekwane to study philosophy in a way in Bolan. My professors in Bigard Memorial Seminary, Enugu. My professors in Washington, D.C., in New York, in Israel, and different institutions that I have studied. I'm very grateful to them. And of course, my academic colleagues here. I'm very grateful to you, all the doctors, the HODs, and you know I love you so dearly. I will love to mention you by names. But I've been sad that my time is up. I'm very grateful to you. I'm very grateful to our amiable Vice Chancellor, Reverend Professor Hyacin Ementa Ichoku. He invited me here to Veritas, and he has always been behind me as a friend. So I'm very grateful to him and members of the council. I'm very grateful to all my professional colleagues professional associations that I belong, so many of them, cited um, earlier. And I want to thank you, my sponsors, and I want to thank you, my benefactors and my benefactresses, the students, the various committees. Professor Gabriel Egbe, he carried this inaugural lecture on his head. So all and other members of that committee, I am very grateful. And it goes back to the saying, it takes a village to raise a child. So thank you, all of you, for coming. Thank you for listening. And thank you. May God bless you. It takes a village to raise a child. Can we please all stand and give him a round of applause?
Applause, applause, applause. Well, it's not easy, as you can all see. The job of being a professor is not an easy one. May we please all sit. Now, at this juncture, we shall go to, we shall rush to the next program on the event, which is the presentation of certificate to the first and second inaugural lecturers. May I crave the indulgence of His Eminence, John Cardinal Onaikan, to please do that. I invite Professor Egbe, the first inaugural lecturer of this university, to please come forward for his certificate. May I now invite Father Professor Michael Udoipo to please come forward to receive his certificate. We shall now go straight into the interlude as you have on your program, and it's going to be a very, very short one. May I now invite Dr. Reverend Father Dr. Amadi, who is the HOD of the Department of Religion and Cultural Studies, to please do the interlude, please. Father Amadi, could you please come? The floor is yours. My Lord the Bishop, the Vice Chancellor, His Excellency, the Deputy Governor, the Professors, the Directors, Heads of Departments, Colleagues, my respected uh, visitors. This afternoon, in this short interlude, I have two of our students who are going to help us grace the occasion in order to give highlights of this academic event. So I now invite them to do their presentation. Today, through the desert without torn garments, Internal dynasty, David acclaims in merriment. Prophet expectation, awaken the coming Messiah at threshold pavement. A time to listen, a call to action. New, New Testament, Testament, ushering the era of Jesus the Savior, incarnate in the bosom of a lowly handmaid of God's favor. Mary presents to the world its Redeemer in splendor. John the Baptist, Herod's arrival in amiable behavior. 
establish the kingdom. The apostles continue the, uh, the continue the work of salvation to freedom, freedom from sin and power of sin and depression. A time to listen, a call to action. A renewed voice calls in our time with urgency, insistence, and attesting prime. Its magnitude, exactitude, and plenitude need no decline. A precise sacred message in its pristine. Jesus loves us and died for us. Our good news in line. Born not of flesh, but by God's saving grace refined. Blessed are those who accept him as Lord and Savior divine. A time to listen, a call to action. Ancient and modern voices raised. The sound of love proclaimed. Jesus, the risen Lord, acclaimed. True baptism, member of his body, professed. One faith, one baptism, one God, priest and maintained. Down through the ages, living saints canonized. Many more emphasis. A time to listen, a call to action. The Bible continues to speak louder and louder, never in our time to become fainter and fainter. Us, a collective duty, make it clearer and clearer, till it becomes one sound all ears are attuned. Yet, our learned professor Michael Odueko is positioned, a biblical scholar internationally recognized, a theologian, and my faculty disrespected. A time to listen, a call to action. The central message, our love to be genuine and unique, expressed through brotherly and sisterly affection, the stronger protecting the feeble in physique, caring and lifting one another in affirmation. No room for the proud, only for the humble in spirit. Rejoicing in hope, constant in prayer, we are one in spirit. Indeed, the word of God, the word of life, receives forever a time to listen a call to action seeking the truth and the glory of god bravo to Veritas university congratulations to professor michael Ubeko. peace to all listeners one more thing yes we are the indigenous here Presented by Andrew Comfort at Nashi from the Department of Religion and Intercultural Studies. And I am Savo Silas from Computer Engineering. Thanks for your audience. Thank you, thank you. We did not see the topic, but we are very, very sure that if the Bible speaks, we listen and we put it into action. And that's the summary of what the professor of our second inaugural lecture has said today. So thank you very much, and God bless you all. Thank you very much, Father Dr. Amadi, the HOD of Religion, Department of Religion and Cultural Studies. Now this juncture, may I please invite Father Peter Bakwab to give us the vote of thanks. Thank you for your patience. We are getting to the end of this program. Your Eminence, Cardinal John Onaikon. Thank you. <laughs> My Lord Bishop, Most Reverend Dr. Hilary Dachalan. Your Excellency, Deputy Governor of Aquaibon, Mr. Moses Epo, distinguished scholars, professors, ladies and gentlemen, religious, on behalf of the Vice Chancellor of Veritas University, in the person of very Reverend Father Professor Heisen Ichoku, I stand to say thank you for coming, thank you for your sacrifices, thank you for the good works all of us are offering in the university and a big congratulations to the inaugural lecturer of the day 
in the very person of very reverend father professor michael ufo Udo Epo. we thank god as it comes to an end immediately after the recession the reception will take place here we don't need to go anywhere your eminence we have a lot to eat and drink we thank you for the time you have given us may the good lord who have given you this energy continue to see you through through christ our lord once again for those of you who are coming to veritas for the first time we begin our admissions on the 19th of september and our resumption for our first year students will be 7th october admission place here in the multipurpose hall at 10 a.m all diocese and in the office of education secretaries screening will take place across the country if you are in abuja you can come down to this university if you are outside abuja you can go to your education secretary's office and get our application forms once again thank you for coming and god bless you all for further inquiry for admission you can meet me father Bakwap, the chairman of admissions thank you and god bless you once again thank you father Bakwap, for the vote of thanks now as part of our announcement there will be a group photograph immediately after his excellency the deputy governor of Ibom state has spoken we will have group photographs graph here please take note of that now may I now invite His Excellency, Mr. Moses Frank Echo, MFR, Deputy Governor of Akwai Ibom State, to please give us a word of or two. Very reverend fathers, reverend fathers, reverend sisters, the university community led by the professors and other academicians, and the student population, very distinguished invitees and friends of Father Michael Ufawodoipo. I bring you felicitations, appreciations, and gratitude from the people and government of Akwaibom State and from the church, our Catholic Church in Uyo and Ikarekbene Diocese. I bring you greetings from the entire blue, our illustrious son our distinguished son who is living out the dream of the Aquaibum Dakada philosophy of perseverance, of excellence, of distinction. I want to thank the university community, particularly the vice chancellors and his collaborators for this wonderful evening of intellectual exposure laced with the word of God. And to say that what you've done today in this famous university, I always think that Catholic institutions, Catholic universities, primary schools, secondary schools provide the best, the best ground for learning. I am a testimony of that. Our alma mater, the famous Holy Family College, a Catholic institution in Quebec, 
gave us all the groundings that we need to propel to the future. I pray, and I'm sure the Lord will hear our prayers to sustain you in your sojourn in this university. I wish this university continued God's blessing and growth as I wish Nigeria, our country, a unified nation of people with the fear of the Lord in their minds. God bless Veritas University. God bless Nigeria. Thank you very much. Indeed. Thank you, Your Excellency, for your kind and beautiful words. Now, at this juncture, I wish to remind, to draw your attention. The experts have informed me that the group photograph will take place at the entrance of the auditorium because the light here will not permit us to do, to take a good photograph here. May I now please call on the Bishop of Bauchi, no, the Bishop of Bauchi to give us the concluding prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for this great opportunity to ruminate on very wonderful theological item fighters at different levels to make this university attain its proper position. We thank you for the quality knowledge manufactured here and we have to we have take to pictures, pictures before we leave. Yeah. The attention is. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, a new directive. Okay, we shall be taking the photograph, the group photograph in the hall as against the earlier announcement of. Yeah. Your Excellency, we'll take the group photograph. Photograph, please. We are not done yet. photograph now please all right I invite his eminence my lord bishops his excellency the deputy governor the vice chancellor of the university and professor Ewe. this will be the first set of photographs please inside the hall here the reception will take place in the hall here father please all right. All right, thank you very much. Now, let me remind you once again that the reception will take place inside the hall here. For those of us who have not had anything to eat, there is rice and stew, very plenty. Yes, 
All right. We will process out and the reception will start immediately. Members of the academic community of Veritas, we shall process out and the reception will start immediately. Can we please make the procession? Evelyn, control the procession. Who is supposed to be at the front now? All right, the procession is continuing. Where is going? Okay. May I please remind you that the reception will take place in the hall here. Yes. How will you come back? 